welcome to Art and Fashion with Dominique. I'm here with the lovely Sherry Via Rexer from Ripe Art Gallery, and we are going to do our interview today on the Daily Blue. So thank you for tuning in. Hi, Cher Sherry. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Ripe Art Gallery. Um, Ripe Art Gallery. Um it's my baby for the past 10 years. Um, we are a art gallery, obviously. We're also a custom frame shop. I have a boutique that I sell handmade jewelry and um, you know, handmade items, scarves, handbags, that sort of thing. But mainly, we're just about the framing and, and selling art. OK. Now, you said you've been open for 10 years. Did you start out as an art gallery? Did you start out selling items at the location? We have a funny history. <laughs> um, I started out um, mainly painting in people's homes. I was doing faux mm -hmm. finishes for uh, you know clients and friends. And I had been in the framing industry for uh, many years. So my painting clients were saying, oh, well, you do custom framing. Can you frame this? So I started framing in my basement and then outgrew that and needed studio space. So I found a tiny space in Huntington Village. And I was there for a year. And then I outgrew that, and that's when I moved to Green Lawn. And I was there for seven years. And now I'm in my space now for a little over a year. So oh, okay. here we are. So this is a fairly new space for you. So yes. the history of the, the gallery itself and your business is 10 years, but the space itself is about a year? Yes. Okay. Um, so what is your kind of educational background getting into the faux finishes, the art, the framing, everything? All practical. Um, <laughs> practical. I was a music ed major in college, a musician my whole life, and trained classically. So um, when I left a teaching position, um, I got into playing jazz, and I needed a job that would allow me to be out late, and I found picture framing. I was mm -hmm. waiting tables, and then somebody said, you have a great eye for color. See my friend at the frame shop. So I worked in a frame shop for four years and continued playing. Um, I was playing jazz bass at the time, and um, that just sort of set me down this path. I loved the work, and then I left there, and I worked for a year with a faux finisher, a well-known faux finisher here on the island, and learned the business from there. And then when I left her, I just sort of freelanced, um, working for galleries everywhere from Great Neck to Setauket all on the North Shore, and then started painting just to supplement my income, and that's how it happened. Okay, wow, that's really great. That's a great to know, because a lot of people think they have to go to school for something very specific, like art curation and art history, to get into something like having an art gallery. Um, now, how did you meet a lot of the art? Like, where, where did you go from framing to actually hosting art and art shows at your gallery? Uh, well, I started in the little space in Huntington, mm -hmm. and um, basically I was just like calling my friends, like, what do you have? <laughs> um, how many pieces do you have? And so I started using two walls of the gallery as, or as the, of the space as art gallery walls, and just started having parties associated with opening the shows. And I did, I think, like six or seven shows out of that small space. And then when I moved to Green Lawn, I was really looking for a space that would function for everything that I did. Mm -hmm. So um, the first three quarters of my space what I used as art gallery, and then we had frame shop and everything, and um, that worked great. I did probably, I don't know, I think I counted about 100 shows out of that space. Oh, wow. And then I was also curating for other people um, that had spaces that wanted to use them as galleries, and I was just bringing artists in, and then it, it got to the point where I didn't have to call anybody, that they just started coming to me. Because I didn't realize it, but artists are always looking for space to show in. So. That's true. That's true. Now, how often do you have art shows now? Um, I change the walls every three to four weeks. Okay. Um, sometimes we do it a little bit quicker, depending on what we're showing. But um, a nice run for an artist is three to four weeks. Okay. And how do artists uh, submit their work to you now? Well, um, now I ask just for online submissions. I just want to see emails because mm -hmm. I explain to people that when I'm in the store, I'm in business lady mode. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about what has to be done, who's getting paid, how, how things are happening. And when I get home at night and go through emails, that's when I can be um, a curator. It, it, I can relax and, and look at art and really 
It also keeps everything in one place, too, yeah. because I also know that you tend to be a little bit scattered and doing everything hands-on when you're at the business and then having everything be visible in your email all in one spot. At least you could compare, contrast, and reference it all in one place, and it makes it a little bit more simplified Absolutely. To, to have it that way. Absolutely. It's much easier. I could spend all day long talking to artists and not making any money, so I have to really compartmentalize that and say, no, just send me emails. Mm -hmm. Do you have themes for shows, or is it pretty much an open submission where people submit to you and... Um well, I have a group show every mm -hmm. year for Valentine's Day, and every year we come up with a theme. Mm -hmm. um, last year we did the circus. One of my favorite themes was Love Stinks for Valentine's Day. That was great. Mm -hmm. And um, that's open submission. So okay. anybody that submits to that, as long as it falls within the theme, um, we ha that hangs. Um, this year I'm doing a... Um, a juried photography show, which mm -hmm. is something I've never done before, and we're not doing a theme with that. I think we're just looking for um, promising Long Island photographers and, and give them a, you know, a space to show for the month of December. And for the group shows, how many artists are generally in one show? I've had from you know 30 to 70 artists wow. in a group <laughs> show. Um, yeah, I, it's kind of like a gallery owner's worst nightmare with the grape sh with group <laughs> shows because you have so much work and so many people and I call it like herding cats. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's difficult to keep everybody sort of, you know, all in one place and It's a organized. large space though. How, how big is the, the space that you exhibit in right now? Um, we're at about, I think it's about 1,300 square feet Okay. Um, just for the gallery yeah. and then we have extra space beyond that but um, just the gallery space is that. Mm -hmm. So I mean the gallery space itself it's more than just a gallery space because it's not that kind of basic cold like formal I mean it is it does have the, the formal beautiful lighting and a beautiful space but you have had performances there as well you involve other businesses and cross promote by having these food trucks and kind of other small businesses participate could you elaborate yeah. a little bit on that um, I do this you know for a couple reasons. A, I like to support other small businesses. I think that's really important. Um, but I also have this space that it, we're, we are capable of doing so much in. So I've invested in theater lighting so that we can do an actual theater production mm -hmm. um, and light it well without having to rely on the house lights. Um, I've also brought with me, because I had in our old space, a um, movie screen and projector. So we're just waiting to get the projector installed, but we'll be up and ready to show films. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, it's all art, and so I like to be able to incorporate different mediums into what we show. Mm -hmm. And would you agree that hosting like events also helps broaden the, the people that come in and everybody brings their own friends and yeah. family and discover the gallery where they may have not known about it before? Absolutely. That, you know, I don't advertise. So for me to keep people coming through my space um, is my advertising. Mm -hmm. And you, you're going to get a different crowd with a theater crowd than you would with just an art crowd. You'll get a different crowd with movies. Um, we're, we're also going to be planning on bringing music in in November. So, again, a different crowd. And that'll go around full circle with your backgrounds a little bit, too. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, now, for artists interested in exhibiting, um, what's the like technical breakdown when it comes to taking a commission and selling work? Um, also, who are your clients who buy artwork and um, anything well, you want to touch upon with that? We've, we've spent the past 10 years really honing a, uh, a good mailing list of mm -hmm. people that are interested and likely to buy. Um, so I feel really good about my collector base right now. It's difficult. That's, a really, that's one of the hardest things mm -hmm. to, to build. Um, as far as the business end of it, the gallery puts in, um, we do all the promotion, we, we generate postcards, we generate the press that goes along with the show. Uh, we also pay the PSE and G bill. So mm -hmm. when it comes to sales, we take 50%. Mm -hmm. Some artists think that's really, oh my God, that's awful, you know, how could you? Um, but I've seen galleries range from 30% to 60%. I've honestly, I feel like 50% is what I've usually heard. 
standard. I went to school for art as well, and we worked with a lot of galleries, and that seemed very standard. Yeah, yeah. At this point, it is. And I, when I first started, I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, so I started by taking thirty percent, mm -hmm. and it's grown over the past couple of years. I, I felt like I had gotten to a point where fifty percent was really fair for the amount of work that we put into it on the back end, and obviously we we respect what the artist wants for their work, but at the end of the day, this is a business, mm -hmm. so. And the artists can then price accordingly, knowing that percentage as well. Exactly. Um, which again is seems like a standard percentage. Yeah. Um, now you've been nominated for the Best of Long Island. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so voting begins when for that? October first. October first. Yeah. Very good. So um, I would definitely encourage everybody to uh, vote for Ripe Art Gallery as Long Island's best art gallery. Um, I Thank believe you. you could vote every day from every IP address for that. Absolutely. You can vote um, from all of your different devices once yep. a day <laughs> and I think the voting ends some like about the middle of December December I think so yep uh, and then the New Year's is when the new winners are announced right so right they made you make you hold your breath for a little bit exactly. there <laughs> while they're counting all the votes <laughs> okay now what kind of art shows do you have coming up well, um, for the month of October, we're showing um, four young artists, Long Island artists, that um, all create work based around monsters. So the show is called Monster Mash, and we're showing um, Rat Girl, Jessica oh, Valentin, very cool. um, David Graham, the infamous David Graham, um, Jay Stewart, and a special guest appearance by Ale uh, Alejandro Gallardo. So um, it's it's just going to be sort of a fun show. We're going to open it on October 18th and close it with a Day of the Dead closing party on November 1st. Oh, very cool. Uh, what time is the, uh, the opening? Uh, 6 to 9. Okay. On October 18th. Um, and then in November, I'm really excited. I'm bringing a young artist up from New Orleans. Um, I've admired her work on Facebook, and we become friends. And she sells work like you can't believe off the streets in New mm -hmm. Orleans. So she's coming up, and we're hosting her for, for three weeks. Um, and then in December, we're doing a uh, juried photography show. Okay, wonderful. So a lot of exciting things yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, now for artists that are looking to exhibit work in the future at your gallery or other galleries, do you have any words of advice when it comes to coming up with like an artist bio, an artist statement, um, photographing your artwork, submissions? It's really important for artists to present sort of a cohesive body of work to a gallery. If you send a picture of all the 700 different things that you do, um, it's, it's difficult for a gallery owner to really kind of hone in on what it is you do and what you're trying to present. So um, I like to see, you know, like six to ten photographs of whatever they're doing, but that it all makes sense together so I can understand what a show would look like. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also really interested in where artists are right now. Um, so I don't want to see what they did in college. I'm more interested in what what you're excited about right now and what you're working on. And then, of course, a resume and a bio is really important. Um, basically, the resume that I look for is where have you shown? Where else ha have people seen your work? Um, because that's important for galleries um, to know. Particularly for me, I... I look for artists that show in more traditional gallery situations as opposed to lots of coffee houses and libraries, that sort of thing. Mainly because if they've shown in a gallery, they're bringing um, the potential of a collector with them. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just showing in coffee shops, you don't know if you're ma building a mailing list that way, or or you know building a collector base, that sort of thing. So um, we take it a little bit more seriously as far as where they've shown. Okay. All right. Um, now, in terms of performers looking to perform or collaborate with the gallery, um, what's the process for, for that? Do you usually also look for an artist statement in a video? Um, well, <laughs> that's different. Um, I, I tend to kind of bring in people that um, I'm fans of. I mean, basically because I'm just getting into this. So mm -hmm. um, last month we had uh, burlesque 
Uh, and that was unbelievable. Um, I brought in Betsy Propane and her troupe. Yeah. And it was all because I knew who she was. I know what she does. Um, and that was a pleasure to do because true professionals. Um, and we also had a live cabaret, which was um, over the course of a weekend. And again, I worked with a musical director that I knew from my old teaching days. Mm -hmm. So um, I knew he was a professional and was bringing us a, a wonderful production. Um, going forward, we're, we have uh, Caroline Doctorow coming to play. And I've had Caroline in, in the gallery before. Again, true professional, wonderful person to work with. So um, you know, I just kind of, I try and work with people that I know. At this point, I'm willing to look at YouTube videos or, or listen to tapes mm -hmm. um, and take submissions from people with ideas for performances. Mm -hmm. So this is all new for me. Okay. Now, you've gone through a lot of different <coughs> phases with your business, um, and you said you are looking to have music in the future. Is there anything else you see like coming in the next five years down the line that you would be really excited about introducing, or is music just the, the next step and we're not there yet? <laughs> well, um, we're there. We're, we're there, there with the music. Um, <laughs> Going forward, my husband and I have huge plans for the property, mm -hmm. and so we would, um, this spring, actually, what I would like to do is develop a sculpture garden on our property mm -hmm. and um, have sculptors collaborate with gardeners and create little vignettes oh, based around beautiful. sculpture so that we have some strolling gardens on the grounds. Um, and then I would potentially in the next five years like to get into doing small events with the space that we have I can envision a you know you know a cool small wedding or 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 you know can, uh, meetings that sort of thing happening in our space when mm -hmm. with art around them now so. you do have a, a pretty big grounds and space how big is the actual ground that you have on there and how many buildings are on it we own three acres okay. um, and we're at the crossroads of Huntington that's why we call yeah, yeah. Crossroads <laughs> Farm um, my husband's owned this property for about 26 years and uh, we have four greenhouses we have our barn uh, which we're still renovating mm -hmm. we have the frame shop which is a separate building um, and then we also own three houses on the property that are rental properties. Okay. So it, we have quite a little compound there. Now that you've taken off with the, you know, curating and running the business and everything, do you still do any framing yourself? I do. <laughs> I do. All of the framing comes through my hands. Wow. I run the frame shop myself every day. I mm -hmm. do have two really important assistants that work for me, and I couldn't do it without them. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I'm still, I'm still in the, in the frame shop shop and, and working with clients. It's a very personal business. Yeah, yeah. And so people, when they come in, they typically are looking to work with me. Okay. And then um, you said you had two assistants that work with you with framing. Um, do they help you with the gallery as well? Or how many people do you have working with you for you to I make everything happen? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my assistants, they help me with the gallery. They help okay. me with, you know, the hanging and, and all of the paperwork end of it. Um, we also have just moved one of my older assistants into the position of being our events manager because it's gotten big and yeah, yeah. Um, I can only handle so much. And then I have of my party girls, as I, I put it, uh, that come and help us during the openings just to, you know, act as hostesses. Mm -hmm. And um, and then my husband, even though he's not an official employee, <laughs> he's, he works very hard over there as well. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, is there anything else that we didn't go over that you would like to add? Um, I... I can't think, <laughs> think of anything else. In that yeah. More. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming today, Sherry. My and pleasure. thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This has been Art and Fashion with Dominique, and I welcome you to come back next Tuesday for our next episode on the Daily Blue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.